All the world's major players in the airline, aerospace and defence industries are here at Farnborough for the International Air Show. This is the shop window for what they have on offer and this is where the checkbooks come out and billions of pounds worth of deals are done. On Monday, Boeing announced it's to provide the RAF with nine P-8 maritime patrol aircraft and it announced a contract to upgrade 50 of the Army's Apache attack helicopters. In fact, on the first day of the air show, deals worth £12 billion were done here. But Farnborough is not just about sales. This is the home of British aviation and this air show is now 70 years old. All major technological aviation breakthroughs have been debuted here. Kate Wathel now looks at what could be the future for air traffic control. Farnborough is an opportunity to showcase the very latest in aviation, but it's not all about what's in the air. What about the technology back down on the ground? We've all heard about the developments in the media of UAVs or drones, but what about unmanned control towers? That's exactly what we're looking at here today. Joining me is Anders Karp, Head of Traffic Management at Saab. Anders, what exactly is it that we're looking at here? So what we see is a deployable air traffic control station. On the top of the mast, we have a camera house with 14 cameras providing a 360 degrees image of an airport or an airbase. It's also including uh, microphones, it's including uh, infrared pan tilt zoom cameras to give the air traffic controller either in a container close by or at a distance the perfect image of, an, of the airport. You say it's deployable, so how does this get around and how long does it take to set up once it reaches its destination? So in this case it's a 20 foot uh, unit, so it's a container based. We can ship it with a standard aircraft. Once it reaches the position where it will be, it takes roughly 15 minutes to get the mast up and everything operational. From the control tower outside, this is what we actually see on the ground. And this area could be at the bottom of the tower or it could be up to 300 miles away. Is that correct? That's correct. Actually, it's uh, the limitation of uh, broadband that uh, sets the limits. Uh, so what you see here is the out of the window screens where the image 360 degrees is uh, projected uh, in approximately 270 degree screens. But you get the whole view just in front of you. Then of course, a controller's working positions, depending what the customer uh, uses, the radar image, electronic flight strips, and then the control uh, systems for the runway, for lightning, for uh, communication. The system is already in use in some small civilian airports in Sweden, and it's easy to see how this type of mobile technology could be very utilizable for the military in the future. Kate Wathall, Forces News, Farnborough. Well, some of the technology here at Farnborough is still in the prototype stage. A little earlier, I saw some of the wearable technology that could one day make a soldier's kit that little bit lighter. On display in the BAE Systems shop window are the latest in surveillance technology, a Typhoon simulator and the Striker 2 helmet used by pilots in the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter aircraft. Equally groundbreaking is the latest in wearable technology. This is called the Broadsword Spine. It might not look too complicated, but there's a lot of technology woven into this fabric which acts as a power and data distribution system across the wearer's body. So it's based on an e-textile that replaces cabling um, and so can conduct power and data from a number of the connection points that are shown here. Um, and so you can plug in your radio, you can have a torch, you can have other devices. So it reduces the amount of weight um, that the soldier wears and then provides an integrated um, management system. The device can be built into body armour, significantly lightening the load for whoever's wearing it. So it would um, go inside um, an existing um, uh, body armour, replace the cabling that might come with a radio or with any other system, allowing you to have a common power supply to multiple devices. So it significantly reduces weight, we think by up to about 40% uh, compared to the current systems that the soldiers carry. So basically all the devices that you have to carry perhaps out on foot patrol, you can plug into this one piece of fabric that you're wearing. 
Absolutely, yeah. The connectors are USB 2 standard, so manage power and data. And there's a computer on the back that then manages the supply of the power around the system. Um, then the, you would also then bring a standard battery pack um, and to plug that in to provide the power source. That actually helps you to drive to more, more common uh, power supply, removing the multiple different types of battery that you might have, for example, as well as having a more convenient way of plugging um, devices on and off and changing the, the location as you uh, may require. One day, a wearable device like this could even charge up batteries on the move, removing the need to carry around chargers. The broadsword spine is already being trialled with military forces around the world and could go into production by 2017. Charlotte Banks, Forces News, Farnborough.